Ben Karen has two Emmy nominations this year as executive producer and lead director on The Crown. I'm Riley Chow of Gold Derby. Now, you directed the season's opening episodes, which had a whole new cast. So if there were ever a time to reinvent the show in terms of the way it looks or moves, I mean, that would have been a time. So how were you able to change things up from a directorial perspective? Well, well, I think changing the, the cast was was uh, was always the intention from the very beginning of the the crown. The idea every two seasons was to was to change the the cast. Um, I, I like to think through each season we are modernising the show, um, and not not sort of dramatically but um, maybe being sort of more reflective of the decade that we're in. So for instance, currently, a series that you haven't uh, yet seen, season four, I would say there's a little bit more of uh, a naturalism to some of the episodes that are coming out that season. So yeah, we are reflecting the era and the times that the show uh, is, is, is presented. Now, when you have somebody like Olivia Coleman coming in, who's at the top of her game, how do you kind of guide her performance as a director? Well, I don't think there's much guiding of performances with Olivia Coleman. I mean, you're you're a spectator um, for 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 most of it. Um, saying that, she's an incredibly collaborative um, actor and. I think it is, you know, incredibly versatile. And if if one was to give her a note, she is uh, has that amazing talent to be able to sort of um, condense it and give you a completely different performance for you know for, for in between takes. Um, she is. I I I don't. The, the, the wonderful thing about working with so many different actors is, is uh, they all have different ways of preparing and, and um, sort of bringing their uh, pers- their characters to, to screen. I think Olivia is someone that is so naturally gifted and is wants to be sort of fresh in that moment when you're when you're sort of playing out these scenes that she doesn't want to really overthink it too much she wants to be in that room reacting live to whatever the surroundings and whatever the the other actors are giving her so my job as as a director was yes when necessary was to sort of give um, give us options, but was to try and create the atmosphere and the world around where she and other actors are sitting in, so that they feel that they um, can be truthful to you know to their um, performances. Now, the Crown is a really well produced, well acted show. I feel like the cast, though the original cast, they really came into their own in the second season and delivered these you know uh, amazing performances. I'm wondering how much you saw the same thing happen with the second cast? Like if we can look forward in this fourth season to you know, just them knocking it out of the park. I, I'm, of course, I'm incredibly biased. So you should not trust a word I say, but I think season four is the best season we've done. And, and, I, and that's, you know, as a spectator, I've, I mean, I've been responsible for two out of the 10 episodes this season, but looking over the entire season, we've got uh, some amazing stories. Um, We've got two explosive characters coming on screen. We've got Margaret Thatcher played by Jeannie Anson. We've got Princess Diana played by Emma Corrin. I'm excited by what people are about to witness. I think Peter's writing is the best it's been. I think you are you are now familiar with this cast from season four. It's sort of like welcoming back old friends. Um, I I think the story of Charles and Diana is one you know the greatest love story of the twenty first century. I think Gillian as Margaret Thatcher and her relationship with Elizabeth is electrifying. So yeah, I'm secretly quite confident that it's going to be amazing. I mean, wow, that's that's exactly what we want to hear. So, You came on in the first season, you directed two episodes then. I, I think you were the last uh, guest director hired. 
when you're coming onto a show that's got an established look, how do you kind of give it your own, you know, flair as a director? Um, that's a good question. I, I like to think the crown has, um, it, it probably embraces and, and wants to bring sort of, um, film, well, directors who bring their own interpretations to these stories. I, I, I think the, the sort of the house um, uh, kind of DNA is, 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 is the same through, you know, you have the casting, we have the costume, we have these sets. But I think um, when you look at the different directors, I think they, they all express a different part of their personality uh, to the films that A, they've chosen to do and the way they portray those um, the, those uh, uh, films on screen. Um, you know, Philip Martin uh, has quite a sort of uh, austere presentation of, uh, of his directing on screen. I think Stephen Doldry is quite flamboyant and sort of almost um, jazz-like with his, with his directing. And um, I, I mean, I, I don't know what my style is, but I like to think that um, I, I bring a different uh, sort of feel and, and uh, expression to Peter's writing. And, um, you know, yeah, I was the last one in. I managed to sort of get in at the very last minute and, and persuade them that, I, you know, I thought this was some of the best writing I'd, I'd read and, and wanted to be part, be part of this um, as part of this project and, and have stayed around because of that reason, you know, stayed around from season one through season two to season three and now season four because of the strength of the writing and the, the most amazing, um, talented um, people who make the show genuinely. I mean, I, I, and, the, and the incredible cast that come along. So, um, and every film I've done or every, all the films I've done, I felt are, different and unique enough to sort of stand alone. I mean, there's always one every season. So season one, Assassins was probably my favorite child from that season, you know, um, season two was Beryl, which was the, you know, the amazing kind of um, story between Margaret and Tony. And then season three was Aberfan. So there's always one that um, has a particular um, uh, uh, sort of resonates with me and, and a film that I'm most proud of, but I, you know, I just feel incredibly privileged to, to be here making these and, and uh, um, I don't know about my style. You, do, you know, other people would probably have to comment on that. Uh, yeah, this season you were actually submitted for an Emmy and you were nominated for Aberfan. Uh, why did you choose that episode over your other three from uh, the third season? Um, I chose, I mean, I chose Aberfan because I think it's, it's, it's my best work. I mean, hands down, the best piece of directing work I've ever I, I've, I've done in my career. Um, I think it's, um, it, it stands alone and uh, I'm, I'm most proud of it. Do you feel like there's a uh, lesson in the story of Aberfan? I don't know. It's a, I think there are, I don't know, there are many, you know, there are many lessons in, in, in Amavan, but I think that's open to interpretation for the, for the viewer. Um, you know, for uh, my family, my father is from South Wales. Um, so I sort of understand a little bit about the reality of living in a town like um, Amavan, you know, where every window looks out onto that, uh, works every street points up to the you know to the tip um, so i I knew a bit about that about that that world and and um, and I sort of wanted to uh, I was kind of concerned with that human tragedy of of what happened to this sort of mining town and and ultimately what you know it's the crown and what that effect had on on the on the on the people in Aberfan, on a nation, and ultimately on a, on on the Queen, and um, you know that's where uh, Peter's writing is so brilliant because he really manages to sort of bend your mind and explore some of those ideas around what um, you know what those what people in power uh, are have how they respond in situations like that and what is expected from them and and 
Um, so yeah, I, you know, many, many lessons. <laughs> I feel like on a, a micro level, something that's more open to your interpretation is the the single tear that Olivia Coleman cries at the end of the episode. What was your take on that? I, I mean, I think all the performances in Aberfan are exemplary, and uh, and I think Olivia's queen sort of disassembles before our eyes throughout the whole film. Um, I, you know, Olivia naturally and understandably had a, a very strong emotional response to the script. Um, and we, we had to find sort of imaginative ways to, to mitigate her real upset in order to show the, the, the sort of the Queen's inherent um, re restraints. Um, but the, the, so the particular scene that you're talking about, um, we actually filmed, an, uh, we filmed a, num well, a, a number of options uh, 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 for the end and genuinely not knowing which one we were going to go with. Um, and I think there's a strength in that slightly of sort of saying, I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, there was one version really early on where we just stayed behind and didn't come around the front. And we sort of, you know, that idea of leaving that open to the imagination of the viewer and whether or not she may have cried or not cried, I don't know. But, um, so, I think the film itself um, decided what the ending was, um, and uh, I, I think it's it's you know she's the she is incredible, absolutely incredible, and to to express so much through that 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 tiny moment um, is is just to her credit. So you did two episodes the first season, uh, three episodes the second. The third season, you did four episodes, and you're also executive producer. Uh, you succeeded uh, Stephen Daldry as the producing director, lead director on the season. Uh, what have you learned from him uh, in terms of directing? I, I love Stephen. I, I think he gave me permission to play. And I think that's um, uh, to someone. We, it, it's a very collaborative um, experience working on The Crown, and it's something that I, I tried to carry on when we came into season three and season four with directors that were coming on board, whether that be sort of Jessica Hobbs, who is also nominated this year, which is, you know, I'm so proud. I'm so proud that we both have, have been nominated um, for this season. And so, so I tried to sort of impart with them a little bit of what Stephen had given to me, and that was to find time to play in and around the spaces within the script. And that's, and that's the generosity of the producers who make this show that allow uh, us and the actors to, um, to do that. And that is, you know, what I call a sort of permission to fail. And, 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 to, and I think that's what Peter responds to is those moments of magic outside of the, you know, this wonderful piece of writing he has, which are sort of sometimes um, accidents that we might stumble across, you know, like a, a, a bad, a, an example of that would have been, I think back to, to Beryl in season two, when um, Margaret turns up to Tony's um, studio to be photographed. And um, in, the, in, in the script, he, uh, she turned up and they sat down and, and they started um, you know, the sea site straight away. I'd read somewhere, re or I'd, no, I'd listened to on a, on a, a, a podcast, um, Desert Island Disc, where he was being interviewed and he, and, uh, he hated, um, first of all, he hated music, but he also loved to keep um, uh, his subjects waiting to sort of um, put them off kilter. And so that day, uh, we spent half a day just playing with Tony, played by Matthew Good, and Margaret, played by Vanessa Kirby, where he would just sort of keep her downstairs. And, it, and, and we spent literally half a day filming a very silent scene with him uh, keeping her waiting. And it sort of and it ended up making the film, which I'm really proud about, but it spoke more to their character and the beginning of their relationship or, or sort of um, offered a different look at it than, than you know, maybe somewhere else we could have the script. So yeah, the opportunity to, to play um, is something that Stephen sort of, uh, yeah, gave me. Well, we've got uh, other interviews with Emmy nominees on our YouTube channel. You can make your Emmy predictions on goldderby.com. Uh, ben, thanks so much for joining us. And I'm really looking forward to the fourth season now. <laughs> you should be. I wish I've got a trailer that I'd love to show you, but I will, I will be uh, sent into purgatory if I do that. But it's going to be coming out very soon. 
and uh, it's it's very exciting. So uh, watch out. Thank you.